Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge was the most disappointing thing since my son. Yes, I really enjoyed this! No alcohol required. 7.5 out of 10. B plus 9 out of 10. Now, this movie was probably the Mortal Kombat movie you always wanted. I don't think there's anything to complain about with this one. Let me try this again. Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge is an animated martial arts film based on the Mortal Kombat franchise. It is also the first R-rated Mortal Kombat movie. It was well received by fans and critics, and has a pretty good meta score. And I didn't like it. I'm not trying to be controversial. I genuinely didn't like this movie. And in this video, I'll explain just why that is. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand my point of view and get more out of me than whatever the heck IGN said. You'll definitely get what you came for, but not much else. It is a little something for everyone. I will also be comparing this movie to the 1995 Mortal Kombat film and the first five chapters of Mortal Kombat 9, since their plots are about the first Mortal Kombat game. But before I start, this movie is very gory, and I don't think Susan will really like this, so I'm gonna have to pick a sensor bar. I would expect nothing less. We start the movie with Hanzo Hasashi's backstory. And wow, is it amazing. Everything about this intro is perfect. But Sonic, I, I thought you said you hated this movie. That doesn't mean I can't like parts of it. The action choreography is awesome. The tragic backstory is well set up. But most importantly, the gore. Holy balls to the gore. I really can't believe some of the stuff I'm seeing on screen. And I bet the animators definitely went all out here. I especially love the one scene where the Lin Kui ninjas start running away because of how scary Hanzo is. Overall, an excellent intro that sets up Scorpion's motives. We then get introduced to our three other protagonists. Liu Kang is training in the temple, when suddenly, he gets ambushed by a mysterious figure. Lord Raiden! I'm sorry, I... I didn't know. You didn't know. Who else has blue lightning when dashing around? Sonic? Uh... Meow? Then they get ready for the tournament. So a quick review of Liu Kang. He's fine. He doesn't really stand out and I honestly forget he's in the movie sometimes. I really like the 1995 version of Liu Kang, so I feel like that's too high of a bar to surpass. Overall. Meh. Next we get introduced to Johnny Cage as he has an argument with Princess Azula. How about doing something besides crying about your career? It's okay. You can laugh. It's funny. And now he's ready to go to the tournament. Okay, let me get this off my chest. What? Uh, how do I say this? I did not like Johnny. <laughs> I'm always a fan of Johnny Cage in the game and even the 1995 version. But I really did not like this Johnny. Johnny has always been a balance between funny and asshole, but I felt like he leaned too much towards the ignorant asshole side. I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Fake. This thing better not go straight to video. Let me just pee out some blood first. Ew. Can he shut up? Here are the only two jokes I liked from him. I, Johnny Cage. We'll make sure that Earthrealm... So dumb. Well, shoot, Buddha. Snap your fingers, get us home. This is just my opinion. I Johnny, know a Johnny, lot of people Johnny, like this Johnny, version Johnny, of Johnny, Johnny. Johnny, so I may be the odd ones out here, but I really wasn't the biggest fan of this cage. Anyways, let's move on to Sonya. Sonya has a fight and starts remembering her underdog days. Congratulations, you've just become my new pet project. Ew, what the fuck? And then she gets invited to the tournament. At first, I wasn't the biggest fan of Sonya, mainly because she's mean. You're a meanie! But after thinking for a bit, I do like her a bit more. If I were a soldier sent on a mission, I'd probably have a shitty attitude too. It's probably just a case of the Mondays. Also, she kicks Johnny in the balls. Twice. That's a win for me. Overall, she's okay. Look, I'll be honest, I'm just happy it's not Ronda Rousey. What the hell are you talking about? So here's our heroes. Meh. I don't like. And okay. Not a really strong lineup, but don't worry. I'm sure our main character will carry this film. Speak of the devil. 
we cut back to Hanzo. In hell! He is imprisoned by an orc and escapes to find Shinnok. You better cover up, Hanzo. Nobody needs to see your scorpions. <laughs> On the way, he plays Dynasty Warriors. By the way, I quite like this primal Hanzo design. He then meets Guan Chi, and they make a deal. Get the amulet, I mean, key. Then he gets his revenge. Hanzo is dead. Call me Scorpion. Yeah! You see my really quiet scream there? Yeah. Because, you know, I know the neighbors. Yeah. And I wasn't that excited for them. <laughs> <laughs> then we go back to our trio, as they head off to Shang Tsung's island. He has no idea what he's doing. Should we tell him? His journey is one of discovery. Besides, I find it amusing. You're a fucking asshole. In Mortal Kombat 9 at least they tried to tell him. Shao Kahn will conquer all. Dun dun dun. I guess his ignorance will be Raiden's amusement. Then they reach reference land. Remember this? I clap! Remember that? I clap! Remember- Whoa. I can't believe they actually remember Nitara. This is probably my favorite reference in this movie. Then Shang Tsung appears, and he starts explaining stuff using Doctor Strange magic. They created a tournament to safeguard each realm from the threat of invasion. The finest warriors must do battle to decide the fate. Wait. That's the great Kung Leo, but he's defeated by Shang. In the original timeline, Shang gets defeated by the Great Kung Leo, and that's why he hires Goro to defeat the Great Kung Leo. Can't believe they retconned one of Goro's biggest W's. Hey guys, this is Sonic from the future here to make a correction in the statement I just made. I never noticed this in my first watching, but you can see on the image where the Great Kung Leo is defeated that it is obviously Goro standing there, which means Goro was the one who defeated the Great Kung Lao. But that raises more questions to me. Why was it presented in a way that made it look like like Shang defeated the Great Kung Lao? Did they like double tag team against the Great Kung Lao or something? This is my theory, and I believe this might be what the director was implying. Shang Tsung still got defeated by the Great Kung Lao and Goro defeated the Great Kung Lao, but Shang Tsung was the one who made this PowerPoint presentation, so he split the image to make it look like he won against the Great Kung Lao, so that he gets to save face and stuff like that. At least that's what I think they're trying to do. I don't know. I think it should have still been in, like Goro defeating the Great Kung Lao, like at least they should have shown it very clearly. Especially since we don't care about Shang Tsung's power level in this movie because he never has a fight. Like he's not a combatant in this Mortal Kombat tournament. So who cares about whether or not he defeated the Great Kung Lao or not, or he won nine tournaments or something like that. It's Goro who is doing the fighting. But I guess they didn't want to spoil Goro being in this movie. So that's why they only implied it in this one scene. But anyways, my point still stands. Shang Tsung did take Goro's W. He made the presentation look like he was the hero of Outworld and he is the winner and champion when in reality it was Goro. So, <laughs> poor Goro. But yeah, anyways, back to the video. Okay, I'm done nitpicking. Okay, just one more. Zatarans are an extinct race that Reptile has been trying to find throughout the series. They don't seem extinct here. Alright, I'm done. Just one more. This dude gets his arm ripped off here, but then he gets it back. Did he grow it back? Does he have a twin brother or something? Enough! Nitpicking. And then, Kano shows up. We don't care about him. Jax shows up, and Sonya runs to him. What the heck? Why is there this big ass force field? Why Shant Sung? Why? Did he ask the black dragon to install this? Couldn't you have some goons just grab Sonya? Why does this need to exist? I am so irritated. What? <sighs> Or I'm gonna use your ass as my own personal punch bag! Oh, that is so hot. Can I be in the game now? Then Goro shows up, and he beats the shit out of Jax. Let's move on to Scorpion. Scorpion is just about to grab the key, when suddenly, Raiden shows up to give him a pep talk. We all have choices. Live in the past, or live for the future. And my revenge. Revenge is too heavy a burden to carry. You are a free man. It's time you start acting like it. Free man? What do you mean free man? Can he go to Hawaii for vacation any time he wants? I'm pretty sure Scorpion doesn't want anything except revenge. Anyways, back to Jax. He gets his arms ripped off. And Raiden saves the day. You are not to interfere in the tournament. I was unaware the tournament had begun. Hold on, I'm coming for you! 
You hear me? No matter what, I'm coming for you! I'm gonna get you out of here! Wow, I mean, that is some serious method acting there, am I right? <sighs> okay, I see now. I'm not the only one that's getting annoyed. And the Mortal Kombat tournament begins. This is where things get spicy. Spicy. Johnny gets teleported to an old building. Then he fights Baraka. This fight sucks, mainly because it doesn't feel like a battle, and more like a Tom and Jerry skit. It was nice being able to make one of these and have some language in it. Yeah. I always hate when shows, they have that free reign to do that, and, and then they it's... overdo it. There's nothing adult about this right. or whatever. I feel like we used it in a natural way in this yeah. sh show. It's, it's, it's not, in there, but it's yeah. not like so in your face. That's what you would say yeah, in, if you're yeah. being chased by a creature with knives coming out of his wrists. Hey, asshole! That was custom, dick! But by far the worst part about this fight is the ending. Johnny runs to the rooftop, jumps off while giving the finger, and oh dies. Jumps off, then starts flying, and lands on a tree. Okay, and what a baraka. He dies from falling debris. On a rooftop, where Johnny somehow planned this, and Baraka decides not to destroy the rocks or jump off to chase Johnny. He just stands there like a good Tarkatan, and dies. Then we jump to Sonya vs Reptile, but before we talk about the fight, I would like to praise Reptile's design. Reptile's design has always been a balance between his human form and his reptile form, and I personally think they really nailed the look in this movie. Life is good, but it can be better. Hashtag not a furry. Hashtag shut the f*** up. Anyways, this fight really sucks. We start the fight with Reptile booping Sonya. Boop, boop, boop. And then he shoots acid onto Sonya's arm pad, and then decides to miss every shot. And then he gets defeated with one move. And then he gets decapitated. First time. My problem with this fight is that they establish just how strong Reptile is, yet he still loses. Let's compare abilities. Reptile has the element of surprise, invisibility, heat vision, acid spit, and can cut trees. Somehow, Sonya has gun. I forgot to mention Reptile can dodge bullets, pink energy ring, and most importantly, pot armor. This fight and the Baraka one just feels really unsatisfying. Imagine a character showing all his cool abilities, and they get defeated with one move. Talk crap about the 1995 movie all you want. At least the Reptile vs Liu Kang fight in that was more fun, because their fighting skills were on par with each other. Honestly, if Baraka and Reptile were not held back by the plot armor, I bet they could win this tournament. But alas, this is not their movie, so they must die. Rest in peace dental problems. And Lizard Man, your efforts will not be forgotten. Then we cut to Scorpion torturing a Lin Kui ninja. Die knowing I will kill every last member of the Lin Kuei on this island. Then we cut to Liu Kang vs Princess Azula. It's funny. You are Raiden's chosen one? No wonder your realm has lost so many tournaments. Do not get up. And then she gets defeated, but Liu Kang doesn't kill her. Because she's pretty. I take no pleasure in hurting such a worthy foe. Johnny and Sonya did though. I thought of something so stupid. I'm going back to the Baraka and Reptile fight. Shut up! Shut up! I need to defend my baby Reptile. What if they were never trying to kill their opponents, but they only wanted to defeat them? Think about it. In Mortal Kombat you can choose to either kill or spare your opponent. Kill him! Whoa, whoa, wait a second. I'm not gonna kill anyone. So what if Baraka and Reptile were holding back their powers because they didn't want to kill? My evidence is that they could clearly kill Johnny and Sonya any time they want. <laughs> Reptile and Baraka just wanted to be honorable warriors. Hey, Sonya. Bop. Okay, this is a bit unfair. Let me remove my stealth. Rah! Take my acid! Oh, oh, uh, careful, Sonia. You don't want to hit my acid. Or, you know, you might die. Aha! You broke my back. Well, that's it for me. GG's WP. I'll get you next time. <laughs> Bitch. Then we cut to Shang Tsung watching the fights. Quan Chi, your warrior from Netherrealm. 
He's proving to be quite formidable. Yes, that warrior of yours, who is killing my Lenkui ninjas, is doing such a great job. Then someone sends the black dragon to kill our heroes. How dare you! And the reason this is allowed is because they aren't part of the tournament. Birds aren't here for the tournament. They've been paid to kill you. Well, Raiden, since they're not part of the tournament, why don't you just give them one of your Thunder Hands massages? You had no problem doing that in the 1995 movie. Uh uh. I don't think so. <laughs> so why not do it here? Look. I get it, the reason the black dragon are here is because we need more characters to kill. No seriously that's what the directors say. We needed to be able to kill a lot more people. We didn't have permission to use every character in this yeah. one. Like we fact, wanted to get Sector in yeah, here and yeah. I think Cyrax was in it at a certain we point. And we actually boarded a sequence with those characters in it yeah. but it just couldn't make it. You get to live this time. Photos. Then the trio meet up. And Johnny finally finds out he's not in a movie. You won't believe this, but this isn't some sort of movie. This is the real deal. 50 minutes into the film, and they do some catching up. Oh my. balls, no one touches me with that. What did you just say? Fuckballs. Fuckballs. <laughs> this is edgy lines. <laughs> Fuckball. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we used it in a natural way in this yeah. sh show. It's, it's, it's not, in there, but it's yeah. not like so in your face. That is simultaneously the worst and best thing I have ever heard. They then find Scorpion with a bunch of black dragon bodies. Yes, that warrior of yours, who is killing my black dragon soldiers, is doing such a great job. Then Johnny does something very smart. He defuses the tension so they don't have to fight. Did you declare Mortal Kombat? Nope. But what about you? Did you declare Mortal Kombat? Good, good, great. Then no one needs to die. Sheesh. Then Liu tells Johnny the truth. The Elder Gods, the tournament, everything. Do you feel bad? Do any of you feel bad for not telling Johnny this whole time? Literally this only harmed him. But Raiden said being selfish will somehow help him. He only seems to be concerned about himself one, and material one, one. wealth. That will keep him alive. But I honestly feel like he's only doing this for his own entertainment. Then Raiden shows up to explain how useless he is. And then he leaves. And then Scorpion leaves. Uh, Joel, when you were sitting in the booth recording these lines, how did you also find the truth in this character, in particular to how he contrasts against Sonya? Because that chemistry works very well in this film. That was cheery. Shut up, Botox. I'm just saying, he really killed the vibe around here. I was just... <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure, she kicks him in the nuts, but, yeah, you know, no. she's doing it for his own good. Then the trio keep moving on, and they get ambushed by the black dragon. Okay, so I wanna pause here and talk about how much I don't like the rules of this stupid tournament. This isn't Mortal Kombat. This is Battle Royale. See someone you don't like? Kill them. See someone you like? Befriend them. Got to get to the middle of the circle, where we dropping boys. But I think we didn't want to do that either, where we're just filming a tournament right. and you're just watching right. one right after another. So that, was, that was the idea of, yeah. about getting them all spread out on the island yeah. and different locations and everything happening at the same time. You know, there are some advantages to having a boring karate, karate tournament. tournament. You get an audience and security to prevent bullshit like the Black Dragon showing up. Having a single elimination rule set would be much more organized, and it can showcase how strong you are. In MK9, Scorpion couldn't just fight Sub-Zero, he had to work his way up to fight him. I demand Sub-Zero! You will demand nothing! In Scorpion's Revenge, Scorpion can kill any Lin Kui he wants. No one's gonna care. Let me show you how broken these rules are in this movie. If I were Shant Sung, and if I wanted to guarantee my victory, I would start the tournament and send all my Lin Kui ninjas, all my Black Dragon soldiers, all these monsters, Baraka, Reptile, Kitana, and Scorpion all onto the trio. The rules state that it must be single combat. Oh you're right. In that case, I disqualify all these fighters from Mortal Kombat. There, now they aren't part of the tournament, so they can kill you now. Problem? Gonna cry to Daddy Raiden? Raiden can't do shit. He can't even consult the Elder Gods. Baraka and Reptile are laughing at how bad this is from heaven. These rules are so bad. Oh my gosh, nobody cares about these stupid 30 year old rules, boomer. Just shut up and enjoy some good action, asshole. Okay.
But I'll complain more about these rules later, when things really get spicy. spicy. So Scorpion shows up to save the day, and then we get some Sonya action, with Johnny acting like a fool, some Liu Kang action, and Kano does what he does best. <laughs> Sucking. Then we get the moment we've all been waiting for, the Scorpion vs Sub-Zero fight. You will die for what you did! I don't even know who you are. And it's pretty sweet. The fight ends with Scorpion forcing them both down onto Spike, concluding his arc. Then Sonya says fuck Earth Realm and chases after Connor. Then Johnny says fuck Earth Realm and chases after his date. And Liu Kang goes to the final challenge. Then Quan Chi visits Scorpion and reveals the truth. I killed them. It was me. Quan Chi all along. I would say this is a dumb and rushed reveal. But it's worse than the original, so I ain't complaining. If you are not the murderer, then who is? I am the one you seek. <laughs> it's just sitting behind him. <laughs> He's been looking for this motherfucker for like four games. He's just <laughs> and thus, Scorpion's rage keeps him going. Then we cut to Sonya, and it turns out Kano has Jax. And he releases a bunch of monsters onto her. Alright hey guys, uh, why are we fighting her? Like, we do realize we're defending an armless man, right? Him being dead or alive won't affect the outcome of the Mortal Kombat tournament. Uh, don't we have, like, better stuff to do? GET THEM! Can I go home? You're excused. Anyone else? No, no we're, we're, we're good. good. We're good. GET THEM! Then they attack Sonya. She tries to fight back. But the monsters are proving to be too much for her. I've seen enough videos to know where this is going. Then Liu Kang goes to the final level and faces off against Goro. Goro seems to be winning. So Shang Tsung does a premature celebration and asks Quan Chi to pour some wine. Right in front of him? Okay, no. Right in front of my salad? Then we cut back to Sonya getting destroyed, and just as she's about to get bored, Shining Reference shows up to save the day. Wow, that was a very impressive kick for a normal human being. Knocking over all these monsters. If we were to say each of these monsters are around 200 pounds, and there are 3 monsters plus a horse, that would mean Johnny knocked over around 1600 pounds of weight. Very cool. Then Johnny activates hacks and starts beating up everyone. Holy shit, Johnny Cage can fight. Holy shit, Johnny can fight. Seriously, is this some sort of subversion of expectations? If you're a Mortal Kombat fan, I'm pretty sure you know Johnny can fight. If you're not a Mortal Kombat fan, I'm still pretty sure you know Johnny can fight. If Johnny could fight, then why didn't you fight Baraka? Why didn't you fight the Black Dragon? With how strong you are I'm pretty sure you could beat them easily. Did you get strong because you found someone you cared about to fight for? Until he finds something more to care about. Something greater than himself to live for. No. The reason why Johnny has been fumbling around acting like a fool this whole time was to shock the audience that he can fight. Holy fuck ball. Johnny Cage can fight. In NK9. All I needed was one line to convince me Johnny could fight. Fans think my moves are all wirework and special effects. Truth is, I am the special effects. Badass, in Scorpion's Revenge. Oh shit, Johnny Cage can fight. With how OP he is here, it would make more sense if he activated his green glowy powers. But I guess that's too silly for our dark edgy R rated movie. Not like this isn't more silly. Look how strong Johnny is. He can knock someone down, make them float in the air. And disappear. Oh my gosh, Xanax, stop complaining and nitpicking and just enjoy the movie! Okay, we look at Johnny Go. Nut Punch reference. I clap! Jean Claude Van Damme reference. Clap, clap! Sonya joins the action too. Even though she looked like she was dying, she must have gotten motivated. And they dynasty warriors everyone. We We cut back to Liu Kang vs Goro for some intense action. Oh, thank you, Luke. As it turns out, Goro was only using 10% of his powers and then decides to beat the shit out of Liu Kang. We cut back to Sonya and Johnny as Kano finally fights Sonya, and it only lasts for 20 seconds, which is also the amount of time it took Johnny to run over here. And then Kano gets defeated. Wait a minute. And then Kano dies. 
no losers allowed. We cut back to Liu Kang getting his ass kicked, and Shan finds something weird in the wine. It's gory. <laughs> I thought being a bad guy means being evil, not being bad at what you do. Then Shang Tsung grabs Quan Chi, rendering him useless. You know, we later see how strong Quan Chi is, so it sure is convenient plot wise that he's not doing anything here. I heard people are pissed at Liu Kang for being very weak here. The legendary hero of the Mortal Kombat franchise gets beat up by the sub boss, but to be honest, I don't really care. I don't really like this Liu Kang anyways. I'm just happy for Goro. Go Goro. Show them just how mighty you are. Goro, 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 Goro. Soon your weak species will be no more. No! No! By the Elder Gods. Yes. Damn you! Fuck you Scorpion, you massacred my boy. Baraka and Reptile are crying. You know what they could have done to prevent this? Using that dumbass force field from the beginning. I guess it's only important not to interfere the first fight, and not the finals. Shang Tsung should have just disqualified Scorpion here, but instead he turns him into the new champion to take on Liu Kang. I hate how much he doesn't care. I hate this fucking Shang Tsung. Give me back my carry Hiroyuki. Now Scorpion is presented with two choices. Either kill Liu Kang and get his revenge. Or help Liu Kang and save Earth Realm. The cliche choice would be to save Earth. The darker choice would be revenge. The dumb choice is what happens. We are giving Scorpion his cake and eating it too. He gets to make that change that arc a little bit. But he's also gonna get the thing that he wants. Scorpion teleports behind Shang Tsung. Bet you wish you had your dumbass force field now, and forfeits the tournament. Liu Kang, I yield. No! Then the tournament is finished. Outworld has lost. Earthrealm is safe. No! No! <laughs> bruh! Bruh! No! 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 Man! Oh, this is... Okay. <laughs> That's fucked up! That's the stupidest rule I've ever heard! Baraka, Reptile and Goro are laughing at how bad this is from heaven. Okay I have so many issues with this, but let me start with this one. What do you mean the tournament is over? Tournament is finished. Liu Kang still has to face Shang Tsung, the final boss of Mortal Fucking Combat. Um, actually, Sonic, if you paid more attention, then you'd hear Shang say that Goro is the champion of Outworld, and thus making Goro the final boss of this tournament. Shut up. Uh, excuse me? Shut the fuck up. I can put up with a lot of bullshit for the sake of it has good action, but this, this crosses a line. That's it. It's not That's it. It's time to bring back the finger cam. There are things in life that are set in stone. You know, like stuff like humans need to breathe, fish need to swim, Shang Tsung needs to be the final boss of the fucking Mortal Kombat tournament! How did they mess this up? How did they put Shang Tsung in a movie and thought, yeah, he doesn't need to fight. He can just be there as like a, a, a host and just be done with it. Like, what? <clears throat> you know what? I'm... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning, and let's ask a simple question. What did Shang Tsung do in this movie? Well, um, he, uh, he was a nice host. Um, he then allegedly hired some Black Dragon, and then he got screwed over and he lost the game. Pathetic! I'm sorry, wasn't this the guy who claimed he won nine tournaments? Not Goro! Shang Tsung won nine tournaments, apparently, and, and he's not even a fighter in this movie. I, Shang Tsung, winner of the last nine tournaments. Seriously? Shang Tsung's signature moves are his soul-sucking magic and the ability to transform into anyone he wants. And he did none of that. Nada. Zilch. All he did was the, the Doctor Strange PowerPoint presentation, teleporting combatants, and a fiery grabby hands. That's like, so lame. Quan Chi, Quan Chi was more Shang Tsung than Shang Tsung in this movie. What is the point of having Shang Tsung in this movie if he's not even gonna fight? Goro can literally replace 
Shang Tsung, and nothing would change. Nothing! Goro can host a tournament and fight Liu Kang. There is no point of having Shang Tsung in this movie at all. People who are Mortal Kombat fans are going to get their expectations super subverted by the end of this movie. Not because Scorpion wins by yielding. No, no, no. It's the fact that Shang Tsung is not a fighter in this movie. So that way Scorpion yielding will let them win the tournament. That is the plot twist. That is the mind-blowing fact. Let me tell you something, my expectations were definitely subverted. I did not expect that at all. That's a real shitty subversion, but I totally didn't expect that. Great job, guys. Amazing subversion of expectations. Wow! And people who know nothing about Mortal Kombat are going to walk out of this movie thinking that Shang Tsung is the pussy secretary character that stands next to the big boss. When in reality, he's supposed to be a big boss character himself! This movie is a disgrace to Shang Tsung's name. It is a disgrace to Tagawa's legacy. Even the people who like this movie, I don't think I've ever heard anyone utter a single praise for Shang Tsung's character. He's just that pathetic. I fucking hate him. And I'm done ranting. I cannot believe how much bullshit I'm feeling just because Shang Tsung isn't the final boss of this movie. It's bullshit. It's stupid. It completely ruins the movie, in my opinion. This one point. <laughs> Though I am done ranting about Shang Tsung, I am not done with this video because I still have to go on about Scorpion. So, back to the video. I really, really hate how they made Scorpion the hero of this story. One of the reasons they did it was definitely to shock the audience. Liu Kang losing and Scorpion being the hero is so subverting expectations. I do love what you did here where it's like Liu Kang didn't win the tournament. Right. There's so many different outcomes in the game. Every character you play has a different ending. Which right. one is the real ending? I like that we didn't have the no. chosen one win. I applauded it for being different! It broke new ground! But the main reason I don't like Hero Scorpion is a very simple why. Why does Scorpion want to save Earthrealm? Scorpion's biggest motive is to avenge his clan and family, yet he helps save Earthrealm. Because, 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 because he is a free, free man. man. He can choose his own destiny. What are you doing? Living for the future. And he chooses to save the world. Because that's what heroes do. Ed Boon had a Kragerism after this. I have a theory as to why they did this. During the movie, they keep pushing the revenge bad narrative. Revenge is too heavy a burden to carry. Vengeance is not the way, Scorpion. You don't have to be this person. You don't have to fall into the revenge game because that's not necessarily going to give you the freedom you think you need. At the end of the day, revenge is this kind of like cancerous thing. It mm -hmm. never does what you think it's going to do. It never fills that hole. I think I, what I love about Scorpion too is that kind of nihilism. You know, at the beginning, obviously, he just is like consumed with one thing. It's not right or wrong. It's just, you did this to my family and now you're going to pay. So by having Scorpion help Liu Kang, it's now okay for him to have his revenge. But like, it's not. Just because you did a nice thing, doesn't mean revenge is okay now. In the 1995 movie, Liu Kang wanted revenge for his brother, and that was his only reason for joining the Mortal Kombat tournament. The great tournament was too much responsibility, but vengeance, that's so much simpler. But by the end of the movie, he realizes that this is more than his own selfish desires. It's about saving the world, saving the ones he cares about, the responsibility of the chosen one. I am the chosen one. He even offers mercy to Shant Sung. Surrender, it's over. <laughs> this is the character growth I like to see. Perhaps they were going for this in Scorpion's Revenge, but I really didn't feel that way. Anyways, the whole point of the Scorpion being a hero plot was just so he can fight Guan Chi. I wish Scorpion could just show up and fight Guan Chi, and maybe Liu Kang could fight Goro and Shang Tsung from another scene, but instead we got Liu Kang losing to Goro, Scorpion assassinating Goro, then he fights Liu then Kang, then he betrays Shang Tsung, then saves Earth, then well. fights Guan Chi. This is so tedious. I should probably talk about the fight itself. It's great. Probably the best fight in this movie. I love the weapon usages, and the teleporting, 1995 reference. I clap! Say the line, Bart! Get over here! Yeah! And the final fatality was very satisfying. Then Scorpion accepts his death, thus concluding his arc. Again. Then we see our heroes leaving the island. But we don't see anyone else leaving. 
What happened to the other fighters? So there's other stuff going there's, on yeah. on the island that you're not seeing. Right. There's other fighters doing their thing. And... A bunch of spin-offs. <laughs> I guess they all just killed each other. Johnny and Sonya have a sweet hug, oh. and Raiden gives some advice to Liu. I have failed you. I could not defeat Goro. If it wasn't for Scorpion. Failed? No. Your destiny was never to defeat Goro, Liu Kang. It was to defeat Shao Kahn. When I saw this scene, I thought he meant... Failed? No. Despite what the games would have you believe, it was never your destiny to defeat Goro. I mean, this is a movie. In the movies, it's always someone else's destiny, like Johnny Cage or Cole Young. No, your destiny is to defeat Shao Kahn, the man whom Goro's boss serves and fears for his incredible might, the man who has maintained a mighty empire for over 10,000 years. I know that seems, as Johnny Cage would put it, ass backwards, but rest assured, your name will be in the title of the next movie, and that will give you the power and the plot armor you need to overcome the Emperor's incredible might. Unless they choose to focus on Sub-Zero seeking to avenge his brother. Here, take these nunchucks. They might help. We cut to Outworld, where Shao Kahn is giving Shang Tsung the biggest dressing down of his entire life. It was that old fool Raiden. No. This is all Scorpion's fault. He killed the Lin Kui, he killed the Black Dragon, he killed Goro, and he lost you the tournament. It's all Scorpion's fault. And you allowed him to be a hero under your nose the whole time. Then we get a close up of Shao Kahn. And that's the end of the movie. Tired. That's how I felt after watching this movie. On surface level it's just a mindless action film. But if you really dive into it, things really start to fall apart. You know, here's here is the conclusion. I feel like this is how I feel about this movie. <sighs> it's just... Uh. To wrap this up, let me say my three main points as to why I dislike this film. Number one. The characters weren't that great. Either they were boring and felt like background characters, or they were annoying and I didn't like them. I didn't care for any of the main characters and I wish they all died. I hope you die! I probably only liked the characters that actually died. You my real homies. Number 2. The tournament rules are horrible. There were so many times I rolled my eyes due to how bad these rules are. If you're gonna be different and change things up, at least try to be smart about it. You right. still have to stay within the rules that we've established at the beginning, and we have. Right. This whole tournament was just Scorpion's playground. He got to kill whoever he wanted, and Shang didn't give a shit. Number 3. It should have been just one story. This movie is constantly switching between Scorpion's story and the Earthrealmer's story, and I don't really think it works. We keep shifting focus as to what we should care about. 50% of either, which means it's the master of neither. And especially the ending, where Scorpion butts in to save the day. It felt really forced. I have many other points as to why I dislike this movie, but these three are the main reasons. I'd like to make a disclaimer and say there were definitely elements I liked about this film. The action and fight scenes were fantastic. Even the ones I didn't like had great animation. The director Ethan Spaulding is a fan of martial art films and has worked on stuff like Avatar The Last Airbender, so he definitely knows his stuff. I especially liked Assault on Arkham that was directed by Ethan. It's a Suicide Squad movie. That is actually good. The voice acting was great. They got Patrick Seitz back as Scorpion. I'd say get over here, but social distancing. And they even got the voice of Goro from the 1995 movie to play Goro again in this movie. The voice cast seemed to have a great time with this film, and you love to see that. I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan. A couple of years back, I was sort of training to play him in a film. They wanted me to think of an animal. First thing that came to my mind was sort of a wolf character. And they're just like, perfect, now hit that punching bag with the sound of a wolf. And this Bruce Lee sound just came out. So when I got the audition for Liu Kang, when I went in to do all the sound effects, it kind of came naturally. I kind of just channeled him and I channeled the wolf. <laughs> it sounds so corny, but <laughs> it's true, like... <laughs> The R-rated Gorefest is amazing. To be able to see this kind of stuff on the big screen is a dream come true for many MK fans. And the animators definitely went all out on this. 
I pushed it as far as I could possibly think to push it. As violent as we could possibly be is where I wanted to go. And I told the designers and stuff because we had to draw some pretty, <laughs> some pretty awful things. I told them, look, relish this because you'll probably never get to do it again. You'll probably never get to work on something that's so R-rated and it's, you know, it's really the movie I've always wanted to make. And I also like Reptile's design in this. So in the end, would I recommend this movie? Nope. Nope. Too much BS for me to recommend. I will say I recommend going on to YouTube and search for all the fight scenes and enjoy that. And thus concludes my review. Hopefully you can understand my point of view as to why I didn't like this film. Though I must say. I'm really shocked how many people like this movie. I don't think I found a single negative review of this movie on YouTube. Actually. I don't know how the fourth snake feels about this. Let's ask him. Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey! So, uh, I just want to ask, uh, did you like Scorpion's Revenge? <laughs> yes! Someone else agrees with me! I have a Discord channel. Wanna chat about the upcoming Mortal Kombat movie? Wanna see updates of upcoming videos? Wanna suggest stuff for my YouTube channel? Then come join the MK Sucks Discord channel. And become a sucky. Also. Memes. We have all your favorite memes as emojis. Wow. Hope to see you there. Hey guys, what is up? Sonic Hogs D here, and thank you all so much for watching this video. Even though I didn't like this movie, I did put a lot of love into making this video. So I would really appreciate it if you liked this video to share it with people you know. I'd say this is probably my best video I've ever made, or at least it's the most work I put into a video. And I'm pretty happy with it, and I had a lot of fun making this. So here I'd like to thank a couple of people who helped me behind the scenes with a lot of things. I want to thank my brother, Saya, for watching this movie with me. If we didn't watch it together, I'd probably never make this video in the first place. So thank you, Saya, for the great reaction. I want to thank BK Had for all the amazing commissions she drew for me. I really appreciate it. And I hope to definitely use these meme pictures in the future. I want to thank Nia Petzel for making the best KK in a wheelchair fan art I have ever seen. I want to thank Pyro Chomper for getting me the filmmaker commentary. It was one of the last pieces I need to make this video and I tried looking for it for like a whole month. Another story for another time. He definitely saved my life with this commentary and I really, really appreciate his help with that. And finally, I'd like to thank The Fourth Snake for making a cameo in my video. Originally, I was just going to ask him to voice some parts, but he took out the Raiden suit and the green screen for me. That was his plan. I am just so appreciative of that. And just thank you so much for making an appearance onto my video. Next week, I'll upload the full reaction to me watching Scorpion's Revenge. And let me put it this way. I feel like I was quite nice in this video compared to my initial reactions. So <laughs> just a heads up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did not and you have some things that you want to criticize and debunk, then tell me in the comments. I'd love to read it. I'd love to see what you guys say. And I might even make a response video in the future. Thank you all. So much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!